What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at a metric which helps us to understand where Ethereum is at with relation to all of the other layer one smart contract platforms. So we're going to use the analysis that we do today to sort of start to develop a better understanding of what is the market looking at in order to determine the value of these assets. So we've looked at previously things like number of transactions, number of active addresses, et cetera, things like that. So today we're going to take that one step further. We're also going to look at the price movement of Ethereum and just in general, the entire crypto market. Because at this point in the market, essentially Bitcoin and Ethereum can be used as proxies for understanding the entire market. Okay, so we're gonna look at a few things today and we're gonna start by looking at this here. And what we're looking at is the 180 day revenue share of all of the layer one smart contract platforms. So when you add up all of the revenue that's earned on these platforms, that's what we're seeing here. And what you can see, and we're gonna take a different view here because this just shows you the dominance that Ethereum has. This purple color here, that's Ethereum. These other small, all of these other layer ones right here fit into this little sliver of the pie. So in other words, all of the revenue being earned on smart contract platforms, Ethereum makes up this amount right here. And that's about 95.5% or so of the total revenue earned over the last 180 days. Whereas all of these other networks comprise less than 5% of the revenue being earned. Okay, so we have to zoom all the way in, obviously, where we've moved the scale from zero to 100, all the way down to 92% up to 100%. And basically this sort of starts to show us what some of these other networks are that are comprising these other small pieces of the pie. So we know that Ethereum makes up 95% of all of the revenue earned in the layer one smart contract industry. So when you take all of them, all of the fees earned, Ethereum is essentially the only game in town. Everything else is at the moment anyway, competing for that small sliver that, you know, approximately 5% or so of the remaining piece of the pie. It's actually much, much closer to 4%. You can see 96% right here. So in the last 180 days, Ethereum has basically taken all of the network revenue and it has captured that value while the remaining networks are all fighting for this you know like i said the smaller piece of the pie here and you'll see that avalanche is actually surprisingly maybe to some it's second in terms of revenue captured okay and then we have other smaller players like helium has i have them written down here around 0.67 uh, Filecoin has actually captured around 0.4%. And here we have Solana then. So Solana, you can see, is this right here. And it's only capturing around 0.3% of the revenue being created by these smart contract platforms. And I think therein lies sort of uh, one of the issues that I find with Solana, in spite of the fact that you know, I do invest in Solana. When I do DCA into altcoins, it is one of the networks that I usually put a small percentage of my portfolio into is Solana. But ultimately, the thing that we have to keep in mind here is the fact that, I mean, just look at the revenue that Solana has generated over this time period. It's minuscule, okay? And when you have these networks with extraordinarily low fees, that becomes problematic in terms of valuation of the token, because if you can have one Solana, let's suppose you have one Solana, and that Solana can pay your entire year's worth of potential fees that you may incur on the network. It sort of draws into question, well, where's the demand coming from then? Why would someone demand the token? We know that the fees on Ethereum are extravagant. In addition to that fact, we know that ultimately the Ethereum network is in much higher demand than many of these other networks. In fact, all of the other networks, as we've showed in different ways in prior videos. So, you know, this isn't a video about Solana, but I think that's just one thing to start to keep in mind is 
where is the demand coming from for the token? I think it's also one of the questions that is raised with Polkadot. Where is the demand for the token, especially given the supply and given the inflation rate of the token? Okay, so these are some things that when you're valuing a token, when you're sitting there thinking about a coin or a token and you're trying to think about what is its worth, you have to think about, you know, this sort of a race to the bottom on these layer one networks in terms of lower fees. Well, as the fees become lower and lower and lower, why is there going to be a huge demand for the, for the token or the coin itself? And that's something you have to ask yourself, okay? So as far as Ethereum goes though, and that's, you know, all of that is tangential to the primary point, but what we see with Ethereum is that it has an absolute, essentially a stranglehold on the revenue capture side of the market. For the individuals holding the asset, I think that the, the value in the Ethereum network, it's quite clear. It's quite clear why it is that Ethereum is valued so much higher than everything else. In fact, based on this alone, in relation to some of these other valuations, even some of these other coins, you know, if you look at the revenue being generated by the coin or token in relation to where Ethereum is at, these coins or tokens you may be able to say are highly overvalued, but that's sort of the speculative nature of this market. A lot of these assets truly have no value, but they're being speculated on, okay? And that's why they have multi-billion dollar valuations. It's all speculation in terms of what they may be able to do, what their potential may be. Versus something like Ethereum, we sort of know that essentially all of the smart contract industry is being ran through Ethereum. And that's you know, more or less showed right here. And you can't say all of it is because obviously a lot of the revenue being generated by, by Ethereum is because of its extreme gas fees, which may ultimately come down once some of the, you know, proof of stake Ethereum 2.0 upgrades come through. But at the moment, mass level of revenue that Ethereum is generating in comparison to all of the other assets, I mean, it's clear. It's clear it doesn't really even have competition. It's sort of like Chainlink in that regard, in that, you know, there are other platforms out there that, you know, may or may not have decent technology, but they're just not being used. Bottom line is what we see is that people use the Ethereum network. I've said many times on the channel that I, I'm not a big fan of Ethereum for many of the reasons that I'm mentioning right now. It's slower, you know, it's more expensive. I think it prices a lot of people out of the market, but nonetheless, it's still my second largest investment behind Bitcoin. And that's because of the fact that, you know, what we're showing right here, it has an absolute stranglehold on the market. Okay, so this shows us the relative revenue of Ethereum versus all of the other layer one smart contract platforms. And obviously we're gonna have to switch the scale here because you can't even see the values of these other networks. So we're talking about things like Cosmos, Kusama, Optimism, etc. So we have Polkadot, Near, Phantom, Solana, Filecoin, Helium, Avalanche, and then Ethereum. And you can see that even the second closest layer one network in terms of revenue generated would be Avalanche and that's minuscule compared to Ethereum. So what we have to do is actually come down here. So what we have to do is switch this to a logarithmic scale. And you can see that the next closest is Avalanche coming in at around $100 million. And in this last 180 days, in comparison to Avalanche, which has generated approximately $100 million, we see that Ethereum has generated around $4 billion. Okay, so, you know, these other networks are creating fractions of the amount that Ethereum is, you know, it's generating on its platform. Then we can come down to something like Solana. And we see that Solana over the last, <laughs> and you know, this is what I'm saying, this is the problem. Solana over the last 180 days has generated around $10 million compared to the last 180 days for Ethereum, which has generated nearly $4 billion. So all these things, you know, talking about Solana has so many transactions, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, you have to ask yourself, where is the demand for the token going to come from beyond speculation? Because speculation will only get you so far. It's, you know, 
maybe in some of these more um, immature stages of the market where the assets are new, people are still trying to learn how to value these coins and tokens. But ultimately, down the road, if we are in a position where networks are only generating $10 million over a 180 day period, that is not going to equate to a, you know, multi hundred billion dollar market cap or trillion dollar market cap that you hear a lot of people mention. And ulti you know, the only network that sort of is generating the kind of revenue that would live up to its, its market cap is Ethereum. So a lot of these other coins or tokens in terms of their, you know, price to earnings ratio, you could think of it as, which I think may, you know, it may not be a perfect way to assess the value of a layer one network, but I do think that that does approximate what ultimately it will be valued at in the long run. And the only one of these that really is even coming close to a reasonable um, price to earnings ratio would be Ethereum. The rest of these have just massive valuations in terms of, you know, how much revenue they're generating on the network. We're talking, you know, less than right around $20,000 for Cosmos, um, right around maybe $30,000 for Kusama. Even when you start looking at things like near protocol, we're talking around uh, $5 million. The way that these layer ones are being valued in terms of the revenue being generated, Ethereum is just dwarfing them. I mean, it's not even close, okay? So this is something that, you know, people really, I think, need to start thinking about because these things, they can have these massive valuations, but if they're not generating revenue, then where is the demand coming from for the token? And that's just something we need to keep in mind going forward. So that's going to be it for this one. Until next time, as usual, see you.